What's Gucci, everybody? It's AJ here again, and today I want to talk about hashing probing. If you haven't seen the other three tutorials, the other three tutorials on hashing, I encourage you to watch them as this, is seri this series builds like mathematics. You need to be able to watch, you need to watch parts one, two, and three before you get part four. Now, in the last tutorials, I've gone over deletions and inserting and incrementing and wraparounds, but I want to talk to you guys about a problem with the increment wraparound method and that is is that it can be kind of annoying if you are adding a lot of elements with the same hash value so let's say I have an L I, at three I add an element that has a hash code of three so I have um, hash code of three I should really write this better. But then I add another element with the hash code of 3. And then I add another element of the hash code of 3. And then, in fact, I add another element of the hash code of 3 just by chance, or maybe this is happening on purpose. So now to find these elements, I have to go to find, let's say I have to, I have to find the last the element at index 6 that I added, I need to go through four increments, or maybe even more in another situation, more increments to find another index if I keep on adding hash codes of the same value. And that can add a lot of problems. And so what I am going to bring up here, we have a different algorithm than just incrementing and using the wraparound and, and using a modulus operator to wrap around. And what we do is we do something other than incrementing. And in this situation, I want to propose a different kind of probing. And so what I want to do is let's say instead of incrementing the index, so instead of doing index plus plus or your programming way of incrementing it, I'm pretty sure this is, across, this is pretty persistent across all standards of languages nowadays. And instead what we want to do is instead of just incrementing it, let's say I have a value k and I have it equal to 1. And instead of every time and every time I want to go want to find a new index to either add add something or insert something I do index plus equals sorry thinking of other maths plus equals k plus 2 and what this will kind of do is kind of do a sort of quadratic probe where it will go to different elements and then it will jump to even a even a bigger index Maybe this picture. So it will jump to, for instance, one index here, and then the next index could be far away, and the next index will be even farther away, and the next index will be even farther away. And what this what this presents you to do is it does it allows you to, if the hash codes are different, to store them at different values because the calculation will be different based on the index. So let me show you an example here. While I do have my k values, then I'm going to set the index to equal the old index plus k. Then I'm going to modulus with, then I'm going to modulus it with the um, array length. So we'll just call it table dot length. <laughs> make that. I'll make that a little bit better. And what this will do, let me show you, for example, instead of just incrementing this, it will kind of cause you, kind of cause values to fill up a little bit more um, spaced out, and you, you probably won't have to increment as much. So let me show you guys here. Let's say k is equal to 1. Well, on, on my first iteration, it will just be index plus 1 is equal, is, in, is equal to k. But then on my second iteration, it will be k is equal to, since k is now 1, k is equal to k, which is, is equal to k plus k plus 2 is what basically this evaluation ends up being. So I can say k is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 2. So k is now equal to 4. Instead of incrementing it, it would just be 2. And then the next operation, k is now equal to 10 because it's 4 plus 4 plus 2. And then the next operation, if you can guess it right, is 22, because it's 10 plus 10 plus 2. And then we've got 46. And then we've got 94. 
according to my calculations. And as you can see, this will go on and on, and we don't have to worry about going over because of the modulus operation. And so, again, what this allows you to do is that, again, I'm going to go back to my example, is that if I have something in hash code 4, and something and it gets incremented to hash code to the index of let's say 10 11 or 12 it could be really annoying to increment to that so instead i'm going i can i can skip other hash codes but as since i'm following the same equation whether i'm adding or finding a index i will always be able to find the hash code of that same number now again this is a little bit better than incrementing, but there also comes problems with it. Since I'm not straight up incrementing, as you see, I go from 4 to 10 to 22 to 46 to 94, which is nice. But it is possible that not all the table elements could be examined in the table, even though it's not even close to full. It's only 60% uh, full. So that is a problem that my my algorithm my addition could be get stuck in an infinite loop while searching for an empty slot but it also can be proved that if the table size is a prime number and the table is never more than half this can't happen so it's always good to maybe if your table is getting a little bit more than half and you're employing this algorithm to reallocate memory and make sure you make a bigger prime number and big numbers can be found all over the internet it's actually a big deal to find prime numbers People spend, well, people write computer algorithms to try to figure them out all the time. Well, thank you guys for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, definitely. Um, the next video will be about chaining, which is another fun thing about hashing.